people. So that man that we're seeing waving that white flag, he is trying to be rescued. He's trying to alert the authorities that he needs to be pulled out. So um, it, it's a very different uh, emergency affair than it is down here in Tokyo. Indeed. Kyung La, I'm going to let you get back and get to some more information. All right, uh, getting more information from the control room. We want to go back to Tokyo. There we see the Prime Minister Naoto Khan speaking again. Let's listen to what he has to say. No radioactive material or radiation has been confirmed to have been leaked to the outside. There has been no information on the, of those lines so far. And given this situation, an emergency disaster response headquarters has been set up with myself as the head. We will secure the safety of the people of Japan and in order to minimize the damage, the government will make every effort possible. And we ask the people of Japan to continue to be cautious and vigilant and keep tuned in to the reports on the television and radio. And we ask the people of Japan to act calmly. Listening there again to uh, the Prime Minister of Japan, Naoto Khan, again calling on people across Japan to remain calm, critical in a situation like this. He also mentioned that he has set up an emergency response headquarters that he will head up himself. And uh, we heard earlier that Japan has called for international assistance as this unfolds, as we watch uh, these ongoing tsunamis roll across the land there along the coastline of Japan. And uh, I hear too, we have uh, someone on the line. This is Richard Lloyd Parry. He's actually the Asia editor for The Times. He's lived in Tokyo for 16 years. Thank you, sir, for speaking with us uh, under these unfortunate circumstances. Uh, tell us, you were actually in an office on the seventh floor, I understand, in central Tokyo. What happened when this uh, 8.9 magnitude quake struck uh, well well the earthquake began as as many such tremors do I mean living in Japan one one gets used to these every few months there was actually one yesterday about the same time uh, which rattled and then faded away after about 20 or 30 seconds but this one just kept getting stronger uh, the windows were rattling the walls were shaking. I looked out of my window and I could see a, a, an adjacent building, a seven or eight story building, beginning to move from side to side. Uh, so I decided then it was time to, to get under my desk uh, where I towered while the earthquake played itself out. It felt, it felt a very long one. It's hard to judge duration in these circumstances, but I think it must have been between a minute or two minutes, uh, which when you're waiting for it to end, seems like a very long time. Indeed, certainly understand that. I mean, in actual fact, Kyung La, our reporter there in Tokyo, thought it might be four to five minutes. But as you say, it's a very difficult thing to judge the timing of this. Now, uh, what, what is your situation? Where are you now exactly? Uh, I'm in, in my office, having been for a walk out in central Tokyo to see what's going on. I'm now in my office uh, monitoring the, uh, the coverage on Japanese television. And you I have to say that the central Tokyo is fine um, from what we've seen. I walked around for about half an hour. Uh, people are calm. Uh, a lot of people are still standing around outside, uh, not going into their building. Uh, but there isn't much damage. The most I saw was a cracked window and a few cracks in the walls. Uh, but yeah. central Tokyo seems to be all right. Old, older buildings, I suspect, may have suffered more damage, but it's not obvious from here. The real dramas are clearly in northeast Japan, along northeast coast. And we're seeing now pictures of uh, large-scale fires. Uh, you've seen the, the waters flooding in some of these northeast cities. That's where the damage is concentrated. Yes, and uh, we have listened to uh, the Japanese Prime Minister, Naoto Khan, appealing to the people of Japan to remain calm. A difficult, uh, a difficult thing to do, certainly, under these circumstances, as you fear, certainly along the coastline, the northeast there, the approach of yet another tsunami. Uh, what about uh, people trying to get hold of loved ones, family members? Because I'm seeing a lot of that on my Twitter account, people trying to make contact uh, with, uh, with their friends and family? 
Yes, uh, the, the, um, the, I, I think the problem is that the phones are very jammed. Everyone's on their phone, on their mobile. Even the landlines are a bit difficult now. Uh, I mean, I was able to, to get through to my family in the first half hour after, after this happened. They were all fine. Um, but, you know, the, the system, I think, is overloaded. I suspect that it's that rather than uh, damage to the, uh, the telecoms infrastructure. So, you know, there will, be, there will be a lot of anxiety, particularly for people who have family in these northeastern coastal areas. Indeed. And, of course, what's interesting is in the midst of this and all these aftershocks uh, that you're experiencing and we've been reporting, um, you know, after the initial 8.9, we've heard of a 6.4, a 6.8, that uh, even so, people are still able to, to watch their television. The, the power lines don't appear to have... Uh, the, the, the downing of those power lines don't appear to have necessarily had a big impact, certainly in the Tokyo area, as you point out. No, Tokyo, from what I can tell, is fine. Um, the, the, the damage... You know,